Hi everyone, welcome to the Stay Hungry podcast. I've got a special guest for you today and we're going to be talking about inquiring more customers without relying on cold calling, networking or begging for referrals. Brandon Cockrell, welcome to the Stay Hungry podcast. Hey man, thank you for having me. It's no worries. Great to be here. Let's, uh, let's start with, who are you? <laughs> So. <laughs> well, yeah, that's a good starting yeah. point, I guess. Um, well, my name is Brandon Cockrell. I uh, run, uh, in the big scheme of things, Big Umbrella Digital Marketing Company, but we really specialize um, with helping e-commerce brands really scale online cool. through uh, really looking at it from an A to Z approach. And that means everything from acquisition and acquiring that first bit of interest to yeah, yeah. getting them to become repeat buyers and customers so that's kind of been the nutshell um as far as like what i'm doing right now and yeah and what we're all about but um but yeah i don't know we can go more into it or or well, how you want to take it i guess for our uk listeners your your company's called linchpin sales interactive um sure. and you basically help e-commerce businesses maximize their revenue growth so yeah yeah, for sure. I and mean, that's kind of our, our core um, our core offering and really what our expertise and special mm-hmm. specialization is in is, is helping e-commerce brands. Um, we do have some clients that are, are more local businesses that yeah. are looking, whether that's lead generation or foot traffic. Um, and we do have that, but a, but a majority of our, our client base and, and what we specialize in is focused around e-commerce brands and helping them go from whether that's a thousand or ten thousand dollars a month and helping them take that to six seven figures whatever it may be that we're trying to do awesome okay so uh, talk to me about the kind of e-commerce brands you've worked with what do they sell man it's it's a a wide range obviously we work with brands in the food and beverage industry so they're selling everything from chili peppers which is one thing that i you know um has amazed has amazed me um more than a lot is is how many people love chili peppers uh-huh. and um, so everything from food and beverage to apparel to supplements um, really we've got a pretty diverse group of, of clients that we've worked with in all different types of markets. Um, so we, we've had an opportunity to see a lot, learn a lot, experience a lot um, and seen a lot of success. So it, 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 it ranges. It yeah, ranges. Yeah. We don't have one specific niche. So um what platforms are these e-commerce businesses running on? Well, as far as, I mean, a majority of them from um, a platform of, of their store, their their sites is going to be Shopify. Yeah. It's, it's obviously huge. Um, we do have some clients that, that are WooCommerce. We do have some that just have some plugins here and there. but um, And then others that uh, not as e-commerce um I guess noteworthy, but like Squarespace, and uh, we do have some clients that are on uh, GoDaddy, things of that nature. Yeah, but yeah. The majority of them are going to be Shopify. That's where we've seen the most success, scalability, and everything. Um, so that's where a lot of those are are actually, as far as the platforms concerned. Yeah, cool. So how did you uh, how did you get to this point today? What what's your story? Well, um, you know, going back to whenever I graduated school, I uh, went to a, a small school in the state of South Carolina here in the States. I played soccer there. So, um, oh, what position did you play? You, you I hit. was center mid, uh, cool. center midfield, man. So, um, I had to run a pretty good bit, but it was, uh, you know, I was, I was very much a distributor, not, not so much the, the, the golden boot, okay. um, but I was, you know, I helped people score a lot more. So I center center mid fit me perfectly. Um, so I just kind of went ran with it. Now, you know, it's hard to keep up anything midfield trying to, to play. Uh, I much. used to play left wing at school and I do not look like I could do that now. So yeah, <laughs> it's a whole different world, man. It's I'm trying to play seven V seven these days and it's, okay. uh, it's struggle. It's a struggle, but anyway, so, you know, went to school, I graduated in the summer of 05, mm-hmm. um, and went to work for, uh, uh, home mortgage and within the home mortgage field. Yeah. Um, obviously that lasted a couple of years, which a part of that was being transferred down to Atlanta, which is where we're, we're housed out of now yeah. in our, our main office is located. So, um, and, uh, that was in 07 went and, uh, worked for a couple other corporations in 
uh, mainly business to business, um, some business to consumer, but was always in sales, was always in marketing. Um, the last six years, I had a lot more marketing and advertising side of things for the position I had. So it was always, I've always been based on biz dev and, and generating results yeah. and really focusing on converting into sales and how do you get people into the door and then how do you keep them coming back? How do you keep that relationship there? So um, uh, about four and a half years ago, um, after I had had my first, my, my daughter, uh, I realized that uh, I was ready to kind of make a change. I, mm -hmm. I wasn't feeling that I was being fulfilled with what I wanted to do. I, I didn't think that I was ever going to get that opportunity in, yeah. in the corporate world. So, you know, I knew that with my experience and all of that, that there was a huge opportunity to help businesses and other people get to where they want to be. Um, whether that's, uh, uh, like I said, a local business or it's somebody that's out there trying to build their own coaching program, I knew that I could help them acquire more opportunities, mm. close more opportunities. And, um, and so right about four and a half years ago, I just, I put in my notice, um, with the job kind of just kind of did it. I, I just felt like it was the right move at the time. And I, I really believe that, uh, I could make a difference and that if I wanted to have a certain position or do what I genuinely felt like I could do, then I was going to have to create that on my own. Yeah. Um, and so quit, uh, right after I quit, right after my last day, we found out we were pregnant with the second kid. So that's great timing. <laughs> um, you know, getting out of a salary and doing all of that, but you know, I, I wouldn't have it any other way. If I would have known what all goes into building a brand than a business, it would have been a lot different of a thought process. Um, so kind of jumping into it was, was the way uh, to do it. And ultimately over time, you know, initially the, the business started off as like a part-time sales management is I was going to go in, help small businesses that had maybe a few sales rep and I would be almost like a part-time CFO sure. to them, helping them train, helping them stay and uh, set up sales processes, all of that um, about 45 to 60 days into that. And I had even already picked up a, a client or two. I started seeing that a large, majority of the issue wasn't necessarily closing, but it was getting more quality opportunities in the door. Yeah. And so in order to close, you got to have it coming in. And um, that's whenever I went all in digital and started really focusing on, okay, one thing that I know that I, I cannot continue doing, and I just don't quite frankly enjoy cold calling, networking, asking, begging for referrals, whatever that may mean, was not sustainable. I could do it maybe for a year, year and a half, and then I was just going to be done. Mm -hmm. um, so I had to find a better way uh, to really start acquiring. And that's whenever before I would go out and really build a business based off of helping people using social, helping people using digital and marketing automation, I had to kind of prove it to myself. And so I, I just started started creating videos, started getting, putting myself out there, started really focusing on this whole digital thing um, and creating inbound opportunities. Yeah. And since then I've, I've built my business off the same thing that we do for our clients and what we tell our clients to do. And that's why I'm able to, to sit here and talk so passionately about it because um, I've been through the ups and downs. I've seen money go out the window. I've seen money be returned drastically <laughs> um, from using these practices and have learned a lot that now our clients don't have to, to, to worry about as much. I'm able to pretty much tell them what to expect and really what the expectations are going to be. So it works out well, but that's really how we've transitioned and, and where I've gone since I graduated to, to now and where we're at, which is primarily focusing on e-commerce brands and, and helping them scale because that's what uh, we believe is is the future, obviously. And, and we're seeing it more now than ever with, with yeah. what's going on. Yeah, so, absolutely. Uh, this year's kind of magnified it in, in a yeah. way that we could never have predicted. Yeah. Sure. So yeah. Um, client expectations, you've just touched on client expectations. Um, we do a lot of inbound marketing too. So I understand I can I feel the pain. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. It's a it's an interesting world. Yeah. So, talk to me about clients who uh, maybe their only experience of building their business is cold calling, is networking, um, is kind of that referral based marketing, and in their mind, because they don't value their own time, they see their marketing as free. Um, yeah. And then you come along and you say well, it's going to cost this much. Uh, and they, how much? 
So, and how, yeah. how do you deal with that? Well, I think, you know, obviously my experience of, of going through and being able to tell them about whenever I was doing that and that was solely what I was trying to build my yeah. business on um, and being able to draw to that, but really just kind of breaking it down, you know, um, and breaking down what that looks like and what it means from what you're doing right now. Going to straight inbound is not just going to change your business overnight. It, it is a bit of a process. It is something that if you trust that process and you understand that, look, initially there are very there's certain benchmarks and certain things that we have to look at as positive movement and wins yeah. each step along the way. Don't stop the cold calling. Don't stop. This is to supplement that. Now. now, in the future, as you get it going, it can supplement it. Like it can change your business. Yeah. What seems like overnight. And I think that's where people get these expectations that it is going to happen overnight because they, they see all these case studies and these snapshots of very small um, things that have happened using social, using digital. And they think that that's kind of what is expected. So um, really laying it out as far as, hey, here's what we want to be 30 days in and here's why. And making sure they understand that that's not necessarily meaning you're going to be just flooded with quality opportunities the first yeah. 30 days. What we need to do right now is one, we've got to get content that takes what you're doing in person. And by the way, I still am a firm believer that in person is by far always going to win. Problem is, is that you're not able to scale that to a certain degree. Now we have these opportunities online to do the exact same thing and because video is right there behind it. Yeah. So if you're able just to, to express and talk and get comfortable talking in front of your webcam or a phone or whatever it is, you're going to be able to get that message out at scale and people that are actually looking for that, engaging with it and wanting to hear what it is you have to say. So really laying it out as far as, look, this is the first 30 days. You're going to be getting opportunities coming in. That's the first step. We need people just coming in. Make sure the offer is good. Make sure it's proven to market. We see it. We're seeing opportunities. We're going to need feedback from you. Yeah. Are these quality? Are they not? What's wrong? What's wh are they? Then once we're able to continue and get that feedback, and we understand, then we can start to optimize. Once we start optimizing, we start seeing more quality coming in and then it becomes a time versus money perspective. You can really see success from any budget. You just got to have the right strategy in place. You can't go doing what the huge brands are doing and expect that to come out of, of a starting budget. Yeah. So we have to start somewhere and it's all about explaining what I have learned at least is just really mapping out. Here's the phases. Here's kind of what we're looking for. I understand patience is huge, um, but it needs to be, you know, you're, you're be, having, having a strategy in place is going to help your patients yeah. um, a lot better, if that makes sense, because you're going to realize that they are certain benchmarks that we're going towards. And your first month, you're, it, whenever you, you can't expect just, gold to be dropping out of the sky cool, it's just yeah. not going to happen but if you trust the process you give it time you follow what we're we're creating it will over time and you have to just trust that that process so really explaining that out and getting down to the expectations and why and, and how and that it's completely normal for these things to be happening and it's actually positive is usually what i've found to work best as far as walking them through that yeah for sure i mean we we um over time, we're able to get to a point where we know the average cost per acquisition. And yep. the day I can sit down with the director of a company or the partner of a firm and say, well, this is your cost per acquisition. Therefore, yeah. however many clients you want, just times that number and that's what it's going to cost. And, and suddenly their eyes light up and everything makes sense. But until you can get to that day. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And, and, and as you said i mean you're going in there with that's the one beautiful thing about digital is you can break everything down um to that like you can find for every dollar that i'm spending i'm i'm getting x in in return and then it becomes a whole different growing and scaling game yeah at that yeah point, uh because you've got those those numbers i mean it's it's just data like that's probably that's probably 90 percent of the secret behind everything else is knowing how to understand the data and knowing what benchmarks and knowing how to correct those things when the numbers aren't getting what you want and identifying the bottleneck in each step of your process until you've got it all worked out 
which isn't going to happen overnight. No. Once you get it all worked out, then that's whenever things really start happening. And that doesn't just start with a Facebook ad or an Instagram ad. Like that's just the beginning of it. And a lot of people like to blame, as you're probably <laughs> you've seen, a lot of people like to blame the ads and it's all about the ads. It's like, well, no, let's hold on. Before you start going to the ads, what does the checkout process look like? Or what is your what is your call to action? Or what is your offer? You're not even looking at that. Yeah. yeah, you're blaming the Facebook ads. And it's like, no, the, you're getting traffic. There's and it seems to be quality, but they're dropping off here. So really understand that uh, that whole process to get those numbers. Then, yeah, like you said, it, it becomes a whole different game at that point. Yeah, yeah. Huge. I, mean, I had a chat with with a, a client today and they have an 80 percent abandoned cart rate. Yep. Uh, and they were kind of pushing on. Oh, I don't think the ads are working. I think it's the wrong kind of people. And you know, it's a good relationship. They won't mind me saying, but I was like, no, if they're getting to the cart, there's something happening at the cart that is wrong because they wouldn't have got that far. Yeah. It's yeah. I mean, and that's the beautiful thing about like what you'll be able to go and present now too is, is the data says differently. Yeah. And it's not just a, you know, and that's a big thing whenever I'm doing a, a perspective call or screen share like this um, and we're walking through it it's really you know pointing out um, that the data is is what we're, we're letting the market tell us what they want and people want me to be able to come in and, and meet sit down with them for 30 minutes tell them what they need to change on their site or tell them what they need to change on their ads or what's going to make this difference from zero to a million and what what should we be doing what should we change and and my uh, my answer is always and i know it's a lame answer but you just got to test like run that's we can test very easily you can test very easily to see what the market tells you they want you know and not necessarily i can tell you all day long what i think should be done nine out of ten times i'm probably going to be wrong yeah. i'm not your market you know let's let's let the data tell us and then once we have the data telling us what the market's responding to, I'm betting on that all day long. And so being able to take that and take those numbers and walk through and say, look, this is what we look for. You're well above that percentage. This is what we look for in the next step of the funnel. That's that's uh, that's serving us way better than we wanted to. But this number right here, this abandoned cart, mm -mm, something's happening. And now we've got to figure that out. We've got to test a few things. We've got to put something uh, on there to watch and see what people are doing. Maybe there's just something happening that's that's causing them not to be able to check out. We don't, you know, it's hard to know. We find a lot of small things that you don't see um, once you start breaking that down that something's just off on the mobile checkout. Yeah. And that's causing them to drop off because they don't think to scroll all the way down. Something as simple as that, that you're not going to see at first glance. Yeah, they can't see start, where to put their card mean? details in or... Exactly. They, yeah. Exactly, man. I mean, it's... Um, it's, But it's nice whenever you have that and you know how to read it, you know how to report on it. Like you were saying, I mean, you're going to be able to just really walk in and say, look, this is what the data is showing us. We, got, we have broken it all the way down to this point. Now, you know, now we've actually got some... This is actually positive. This yeah. is a positive thing. You know what I mean? Um, so, yeah, no, that's that's cool. Yeah, we have those conversations a lot, obviously, yeah. as well. So how do you convince uh, these, maybe this year in particular, there's people who perhaps have got no experience of e-commerce, but this year has meant they've had to pivot into e-commerce quite heavily. So maybe they've had to change from door to door or networking or people coming into their store and now they're going e-commerce and the language you speak versus the language that they're used to speaking is miles apart. What, what do you do? Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I think a lot of it has just happened. I think people have um, really had to open their eyes up to the whole digital age um, before yeah. all of this. I mean, and that was one thing that I talk with my team a lot about is that, you know, the market still hasn't caught up to what is actually available to them online. Mm -hmm. The market really doesn't understand the value, I don't think, um, in being able to effectively run 
a Facebook ad campaign or uh, uh, an effective um, Instagram or sure. YouTube or Google. Like they just like it just hasn't gotten there yet. And it will take some time. And then once the market does kind of catch up to it, obviously the prices are going to be completely different. The opportunities are going to be <laughs> yeah. completely different, um, which is why there is a ton of opportunity there right now. But what this has done is really people had to start, I think, looking how am I just like Zoom has has created such a huge different um, or huge different. It's created a different way of doing business and people have just have had to adjust yeah. in doing Zoom meetings. Now, thankfully, we've been doing this ever since you know we started the business. So it wasn't anything new to us. But there are a ton of people who are having to get used to having these conversations sure. through your computer. So, you know, you're really talking to and, and whenever I try to explain it and over the years, I mean, it, I've been all over the place with with trying to figure out what is that secret sauce that is really going to get people to to see the opportunities available to them and and take it seriously in my my yeah. opinion. Um, and it's really trying to figure out how how can you explain it in a way that is going to uh, really be similar to what they're already doing. So, you know, the way that I like to approach it is just think about you're out there cold calling, you're out there networking, you're out there asking for referrals and all that. Well, you know, in the past, the only way to get in front of mass people that were interested in what you had to offer was that you had to put on a, an event, a seminar, yeah. something to get that many people in your eyeballs on. Obviously there's commercials, but the only way if they're buying tickets to your event or whatever, and they're coming, then these eyeballs more than likely audience is interested in what you have to talk about. And they're all, it's going to be relevant. Your messaging is going to be relevant to a lot of them. But now what you're able to do is that message of what it is that you talk about when you sit down with somebody now, if you can just do that in front of a camera or you document a meeting of you meeting with a new client, what you're able to do then and repurpose that is now you can get it in front of people at scale individually who are actually looking for what it is that you have to offer. It's nothing different. We're just taking what you're already doing and we're putting it into a digital Form. Form. That's yeah. going to allow you to get out in front, stay out in front, build your brand, build a relationship um, without having to do it one offs here and there. Yeah. And go and spend tons of time networking or asking for, for referrals or or you know, going down that road that over time is just is going to be tough to scale. It's going to be tough to continue to grow that if it's all based around you and you don't have a supplemental strategy yeah. for creating opportunities. So uh, really trying to break it down that way is I have found uh, to where they can relate a little bit with what's going on and then just see how it would work. And it's not, it's not anything different. You're just yeah. using different tools to your disposal. Sure. I mean, we, I'm always amazed when I sit with a potential client, a prospect, and they'll tell me how much they've spent on print advertising, or they'll tell me how much they've spent on sponsorship. And I say, okay, so what results did you get? What, what happened? I go, well, things picked up a little bit. I was like, no, tell me the numbers. Uh, oh, we yeah. can't. We can't. I was like, well, did you use call tracking numbers? Did you use unique URLs? No. Okay. So I'm asking for a a small portion of what you spent on sponsoring that local team or sponsoring that event. And I'm telling you, I can get you 500 people in your funnel. And they, they don't believe me. <laughs> well, and that's, yeah, I mean, you're 100% right. I mean, it's, it, and that's what, uh, ultimately it took years of, of me having those meetings like you're having to just come to the realization that I've got to stop trying to convince sure and more or less try to educate and um once i was able to kind of have that switch as far as where i'm coming from and helping people understand because one i've, I've built my business doing what i'm telling you to do you know and so and telling you what i know works because i'm living it every single day and i have been living it um and so being able to to educate and really show people why yeah 
these things are working and why, like, why are you able to get 500 people into my funnel as opposed to um, putting a print ad or a billboard or a radio commercial? Not saying that those methods don't work, but just saying this is why, this is what the capabilities are and this is how we're able to do that. Um, and once you're able to kind of educate people on that, it, it, they start to really, I think, accept it a little bit more, yeah. um, at least from my experience. And then ultimately, you know, my goal at that point is, hey, I'm going to tell you exactly what you need to do. I'm going to tell you, here's the content you need to create. Here's the story you need to tell. Here's the ads you need to build. Here's all the stuff that you need to set up for your sales page. Here, here's exactly laid out all you need to do. Yeah, sure. Chances of them being able to execute, as we know, is tough. I mean, it, it, it's not easy to, yeah, to be able to I, do that. I mean, we, we have clients that would have no shame in admitting they pay us to do it because they never would. And yeah, absolutely. That, that's great. Yeah. That's great. Um, and, sure. and, and, and we've also got clients who we've built these things up for in the past. Those things are in place, but they keep us on board to monitor the data, to make sure everything's still going smoothly, to make sure it's all okay. And they know that stuff's in place. They know it's okay, but we provide that security blanket. And I think that's really good too, because when you have a year like this year where the world suddenly changes, I mean, we had clients who suddenly saw the market flooded with competitors. So they oh, yeah. might have been the only kind of e-commerce store in the UK for whatever it might be. And then suddenly everybody wanted to play and some of the people coming into the market had big budgets as well and and then they're like oh right what what do we do now kind of how, yeah how do we change yeah and that's and even though sometimes you can set up in some scenarios where it's it you just see prolonged success it continues just to to roll you don't see a lot of issues um but a lot of times in order to continue scaling and this is like the way that I always will explain it like if you're happy with where you're at in your business, and this happens a lot with lead gen campaigns, of course, yeah. Um, where somebody in in theory, it sounds really really awesome to go and spend money and have somebody running Facebook ads or whatever to generate you more inbound opportunities. However, what's going to happen? Uh, and we're, or at least what I've seen happen, not what's going to happen because everything's different, but what I've seen happen a lot um, in the past is that these are individuals who are just looking to continue to fill up their pipeline. And if you aren't um, looking to actually grow your business and your brand, like continue to grow, bring in more sales rep, bring in more work, continue to take that business to the mm -hmm. next level, all you want to do is just be able to fill them yourself, keep your pipeline good. Look, it's more than likely not going to make sense for you to continue paying us to do that. It may make more sense for you to do some basic stuff, learn it on your own or have somebody help you kind of get it up and running. And then you have to be able to take it from there. Um, but if you're looking to scale and you're continuing looking to want to increase, 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 you're going to need somebody there 24 seven with you because that is where you can, you're really going to see a big difference because Everything at that point, the more and the higher and the more you want to scale, the more attention to detail you need. And sure. that's going to be tougher on your end. Even even if you look at an agency from our end, right? Like our business, uh, I don't, you know, I, I don't really call us an agency. I'll, you know, more of an e-commerce uh, growth specialist or something along those lines. Sure. More like what I like to refer to. You don't want to get say. labeled with everybody else. Yeah. I just don't, you know, I just don't feel like it's sad. Uh, we have some core missions and, and we're all there anyway. That's, that's a whole nother conversation, but um, you know, the, whenever it comes to uh, man, I forgot where I forgot where I was going with that. I got thrown off with my agency spiel, but um, well, you just described exactly why this podcast is called the stay hungry podcast. So, yeah, well, uh, exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah, exactly. I mean, it's, if you're looking to scale and continue going and taking that, I think that's where I was going this. The attention is in the details. Yes. Of continuing to grow and scale. And if you've got a business like ours, 
if you really look at, yeah, we may, you may look at the bottom line number. Now we work on a performance basis with 90% of our clients. So we work a lot like commission sales reps yeah. for our e-commerce brands. So our partnerships are fantastic. We love them. Um, and they do too, because we all have skin in the game and we obsess over results as much as they do. But, you know, if you're paying a certain amount to a team of us, well, we've got probably much like you, we have specialists that specialize in each area whether that's a Google, Facebook, whatever that may be, landing pages, email flows, content creation. And even if you try to take that in house, you're still dealing with that one. And there's so many different moving parts and details you got to pay attention. Yeah. To. Yeah. And, we and we, the, we yeah. say to people, you know, working with us will cost you the price of like, let's say a mid range employee. But the beauty is you get a whole team of people. You get a team of experts to help yeah. you with whatever it is you're doing. And uh, I, based on what you just said, I think you've gone through the same thing. We've had examples of people who thought it was what they wanted. And then when it yeah. got really busy, they were this, it was like their worst nightmare. And and that, that's fine. They, they they didn't want their business to be as as much of a monster as it became. And, and, when, and when they realized that, you know, we've scaled the marketing, which has scaled the sales, but to fulfill those sales, we need to double our team. They changed their mind and that that's okay. But then that's where our agency really shifted towards, right, stay hungry. We're going to target the people who rightly or wrongly aren't worried about that. That's what they want. And Exactly. It makes all the difference in the world. I mean, that's, um, and it took me a very, very long time to make that realization because I could not figure out, um, you know, the, the lead gen, the foot traffic side of stuff, uh, while it is extremely successful and there's a ton of opportunity, I could not understand why um, either the patience wasn't there. Maybe we weren't setting right expectations, but I'm like, no, no, there's, you know, I went through it in detail many times before they even became on board or they came on board. And sometimes, you know, there's stuff that we can always change and do in our sales process. But I really just wanted to understand why we, we saw a, a, hot, a lot higher retention or not a lot higher turnover rate from the Legion side of stuff than the e-commerce side of stuff. Mm -hmm. And going back through it, it wasn't that we weren't producing. It wasn't that opportunities weren't coming in the door. It was that, the way that they were looking at their business was completely different than the, the clients that we have kept on for years upon years because their mentality was, I want more so I can continue to do more. I want to open up that second location. Yeah. I want to hire more staff. I want to get out of working in my business and I want to be able to hire people, but I need to be able to justify that consistency and predictability of that lead flow. Yeah, yeah. You know, I want the math. Somebody who's yeah. like, I don't want to. I don't want to grow. I, I, just, I'm happy where I'm at. I just want my pipeline to continue to be filled up. Okay, great. At some point, you're not gonna. It's not. You're not gonna see it the same way. Whenever you start getting that pipeline, you start building up. Next thing you know, you're getting annoyed with some of the conversations you have because they aren't exactly the quality that you're looking for. Um, and then, so you want to say, well, this isn't working. I'm having to do too much, but yeah, I'm seeing some good opportunities come in, but I don't want to bet these I'm getting too busy. And then it's kind of like, well, you've got one of two options. You can hire, keep it going, or you're going to have to go back. And um, if you're happy with where you're at, then you don't need us. Like it, you don't need that. And I, and so I started realizing like that was just the case. It wasn't that we yeah. weren't doing our job. It's just, you know, it just wasn't for what they were, they were looking for. And I think that we found that out um, going through that and, and really pushing the envelope. So you're 100% right. I mean, it's a whole different mentality and kind sure. of really strategy and what you want whenever it comes to your business. Hi everyone, Fergus at Cobreak. If you haven't already subscribed to our podcast, what are you waiting for? Hit subscribe and be notified every time we release an episode. And remember, stay hungry. Should have warned you, little lad. <laughs> so, yeah, so I, we come at this from the same page. I, sometimes on these podcasts, I can kind of go toe to toe with someone and disagree on <laughs> on what they're saying. I'll say, no, they should be doing But we're, yeah. we're saying the same thing. And, and we're in the position you're describing with our own business. So we know what we need to do to scale it and we can choose the speed of the scale. 
And and our limiting yeah. factor is obviously cash flow is one. And the other limiting factor is talent. We can only recruit what's available to us. And, 100%. Yeah. And, uh, and it's great because when I'm talking to clients, I can say the same things to a client. So I can say, well, look, you can scale at whatever speed you want to scale at. Once we've cracked this and we know what you want to do and, and yeah. what people respond to, your business can be as big or as small as you want it to be. And uh, I mean, we've, we funnily enough, one of our best clients is an accountant. Um, and the reason they're one of our best clients is because they understand all the numbers. So they, they just, they look at it all with like a, a mathematical precision. Yeah. And, um, and we, you know, we, we've been fortunate to help them grow. I mean, they've doubled every year since they've worked with us and they've worked with us for three years. Awesome. And, and now they're kind of like, well, if we get any bigger, it's going to be, it's going to be really scary. And I was like, yeah, it's great, isn't it? And they're like, yeah, let's do it. So it's, yeah. it's, um, I love that. But equally, you know, we, we worked with a car rental business. They grew to two sites, maybe a hundred cars. And then that was enough that, that that was their level. And, and I respect that too. It's, it's, it's fine. You know, they own a managed business. There's, there was two partners in the business, both making great income and they saw no reason to give themselves any more stress. They were like, this, that's enough now. Thank you. And that's, that's fine too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I think understanding that, um, up front, like being able to have that discussion, um, I think is really where you see a difference between certain, uh, I guess, digital marketing companies or yeah. whatever else is really being able to, and I, I do everything I can now up front. We, I've got somebody, you know, we've got biz dev and, and all that. And typically I'm, I'll come in on screen shares um, or virtual meetings once it's kind of gotten to a certain point in the process. And one big thing that I really just try to try to bring up and, and, and talk about is making sure that we're actually going to be able to, to help you accomplish what it is. Ultimately yeah. we won't. And if that is the case, like, let's go ahead and talk about it now. What is your goal? And I know it sounds like cheesy marketing questions. Like we've all been there having somebody pitch us from whatever else. And they're asking questions. Off. Hey, I understand that. Like, that's a cheesy question. Yeah. You know, where do you want to go? Where do you want to be in five? Like that type of thing. Um, but it is extremely important to really know what, what your goals are. Like what, what is it that you're actually going to want to accomplish? What is your sales process? What is, what are you looking to do? Um, because the strategy, either the strategy is going to be different or I'm going to, to tell you that what we're going to provide you is just way too robust. You don't need it. Um, yeah, sure, there's yeah. some other stuff you can do. And, you know, I have no interest in taking money for, from people that I don't think we can help or, you know, it, it doesn't do anybody any good. No, at, no. At the end of the day, you know, um, so I think a little bit of that I've, I've learned that we, we kind of have to help because people are still figuring out this whole digital thing and social and all that and what insane opportunities are available um, whenever it's done correctly and uh, is really helping them understand and manage that, the, sure. the expectations, but also what, what they need, the, the stuff that they don't know they should be looking out for. Yeah. Um, so you know, it's, I think it's huge that we both have that, those experiences. Sure. Uh, do you, do you follow Gary V? Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah so uh, absolutely. Yeah. Our, our team follow Gary V quite closely. And, uh, he, he talks about kind of, um, repurposing for one. That's a big one of his that he reckons he turns sure. one video into a hundred pieces of content, which I'm not, I'm not sure that's true, but maybe. <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah. And then he, he also just talks about the numbers game and the scalability and something that we, we try and drill into clients it, that I think really shocks people is they tell you how much they want to earn or they tell you what their goals are. And you tell, so, you know, very often we'll talk to clients about their personal goals because the business is just a machine to generate what they want in life. Absolutely. Um, and then it pans out, you know, they want a beachfront house. They want the nice car. They want to spend time with their children. And, uh, uh, well, you're going to have to earn some serious money to do that. So your marketing machine is going to have to spend some serious money to do that. 
and they look at you as if to say, oh, I thought that's kind of what you did. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so we mean, you, you need a budget. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, we're for sure. I mean, you're going to, and, and one of the, the best um, questions, especially during the, the upfront sales process is really, you're 100% right. I mean, really getting into what do you ultimately want? Not necessarily the business, because the business, yeah. like you said, is just, that's your way of getting there. But what is it that you truly want? You know, like why did you start the business? Was yeah. it freedom? Was it options? Was it, um, you know, having the opportunity to sell? Was it to create something for your kids in the future of your generations of your family? Like, what is that big thing? Are you looking for vacations and trips and really understanding that? But then also to, okay, if you want to do that, what's that going to take for the business to do? Um, and I'm sure you guys go through this yeah. thing as well. What is that going to take for the business to do? Well, it's going to be, you know, we've got to do a hundred grand uh, a month or have those many or a certain amount of inbound opportunities coming. And okay. So you want to do a hundred thousand dollars, right? Like that's, that's your goal in revenue. Um, what do you, you know, what do you plan? What's your budget? Well, I'm thinking about 1500. <laughs> Okay, so you want to invest fifteen hundred, but you need to get a hundred thousand dollars out. That's a pretty big ask, don't you? You know, don't you think? And you know, that's one of the first things, and it goes really along the lines of what you were talking about. Is like, look, if we charge you five, ten thousand dollars to set up this funnel, this marketing machine that we know we're going to manage it, whatever it may be. And I'm not saying that's our prices, but just putting it out there. Well, you said in our discussions that you wanted to do a hundred grand. And we're asking you to invest five grand and we can build something to help you get there. That sounds like a pretty good deal to me. Yeah. Like, I, you know what I mean? Like, and whenever you look at it that way um, and not saying that it's only going to be five grand, I want to put that out there. I'm not saying that that's all you need. Yeah. I, I heard so, uh, Brandon Cockrell, yeah. president of Lutheran yeah. Sales Interactive, only five grand. That, that, yeah. That's... Yeah. And you're like, you know, everything, all your worries are over. No, I'm not saying that at all. I'm just, <laughs> You know, it's just interesting and you really thinking about it. And and that's the thing is you're, you're making with by doing that and having that approach. I mean, you guys are helping them really see and understand what the true expectations are. Yeah. And, and what's actually going to get them there. I think that's the most important thing to all of this is like people just want the shit to work, man. You yeah. Yeah. I mean? Like they want to. And I know you said I could throw a cuss word out there no that's fine you can say shit that's fine <laughs> so yeah. i uh, i watched a webinar on sunday night a very successful uh lady that sells uh online fitness packages into the vegan yep. vegan marketplace so she's got her niche and she got her business to position for every dollar she spent she got two dollars back and and then at the time she was maybe making kind of um i think she said one hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year so it's okay but it it wasn't what she wanted and she sat down with a business guru and he said to her if i told you that for every dollar you gave me i could turn it into two dollars you would find a way to find as much money as you possibly could because you know you're going to double it and that's essentially the journey we try and take our clients on is 100 percent. we build the machine and show you how it works and then it's up to you how much you fund it and I, I should be honest here. There are situations where that can plateau, and I think that's where you where you were getting to with the attention to detail. Once you reach a certain scale, it's about margins and it's about efficiencies and it's about all these things that you haven't thought about when you were a smaller business. Yes, for sure. Yeah, um, you gotta because you started. You've got what's gotten you to certain points. I mean, we see this in all of our businesses. I see it. You know, at each step of the way as we continue to grow our own business or I continue to grow this business where I'm looking for support is completely different at different parts of the yeah. journey. You know, the person that I looked to and I really looked up to and I was listening to that got me started isn't going to to help me where I'm at today. Not saying that they don't deserve just as much credit, you know, sure. I'm ever grateful for that, but you continue and it's the same type principle is what gets you there now we've got to start looking okay if this is where we've got it 
and maybe we are on one platform. Now we got to start looking to diversify. We got to open up channels wholesale. Um, we got to start looking at, you know, our, do we need to look at ambassador programs? How do we get them coming back on the back end? What does that look like? How do we diversify where the traffic sources are coming from? Yeah. You know, then do we start looking at other traditional methods at this point? Because now that's a whole different market. That's where we can actually have all these things working together yeah. to continue to grow and scale. And so it's all about looking ahead. But um, as you hit each step of that plateau and it becomes a little bit of a different move uh, to get there, to continue that growth. Sure. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, it does. You have, you're 100 percent right. Uh, some businesses, they just they have a cap and it's just not it's just may not be that's just maybe it yeah um, yeah but other ones you can continue once you get people in you get them uh bought into your brand they know like and trust you now it becomes okay how do we how do we continue to to grow that and scale that um and we have to do it differently we've got to think differently we've got to look at it differently and we can't just stay in that one segment we've got to diversify uh big time so yeah, I mean, it's it's definitely that's a lot of that attention to detail. Uh, you're right. Margins, everything. I mean, yeah. You start taking that into play um, for sure. Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, even simple things. You know, when you when you run a team of two or three, it's very different to when, when you run a team of 10 and different again when you run a team of 20. And the, the issues in the business and the efficiencies in the business are so different because you can't have an eye on everything and Every, you know the, the change is phenomenal but but should be really oh, exciting yeah and i think you know i think what what we get into a lot as well and you probably do as as well as we um with with what we do and how we're we're able to go and, and market and advertise is we get a lot of we really have a lot of experience just from the business standpoint mm-hmm. and really understanding like here's here's some potential issues you're going to experience from an operational side of things before we even start our campaigns yeah like we know based off our experience now we can never guarantee you anything but we see that there could be over the next 30 60 90 days there's going to be uh, a lot of things happening probably fairly quickly um because there's a lot of low-hanging fruit out there whatever it is that we just we're, we're able to sense and we need to help them be prepared that look you're going to experience inventory challenges you've never experienced and you're going to experience customer service challenges you've never experienced. It's going to happen. The thing is you need to be okay with that. Plus, if you are a team of two or three, if you are a team of 10, are you comfortable quickly going to a team of 20 and being able to make those decisions rapidly? Because that is what's more than likely is going to, to happen. And you, you need to be thinking about those things because it can be extremely uncomfortable yeah. as we all know, you know, you get to that part, you have to let go of so much. Um, are you okay with that? Are you going to be able to do that? A lot of times people, people want to say yes, they really do. They, they, they will say yes. Yeah. They will they say there. yes. Yeah. And I mean, it is like, I don't, you know, I don't know if I can continue doing it. Like I'm just getting a little bit outside of the comfort zone. So I said, okay, just, it's going to be fine. Like look at all the great stuff that's happening. We're continuing to grow. Um, so I, I imagine you guys probably get that a lot as well, where you're, you're having a lot of those business conversations. Um, and that's one of the great things of us working across a lot of different, uh, industries and markets and just seeing certain things and having those experiences where, look, we're able to come to you and, and really not just lay out data, but we're able to help you kind of with that business. Yeah. Yeah. And what's going to come. I mean, obviously systems and as a marketing agency, we're so used to systems and processes that suddenly you can be talking to an e-commerce business or a car dealership and you're kind of like, Oh, what systems have you got in place for growth? Uh, none, none. Uh, well, I think you need to have a look at this and this and this and this. How do you know all about that? Well, this isn't our first rodeo. We've kind of spoken to quite yeah, a few yeah, businesses. Well, I mean, many, many years, you know, yeah. it's just kind of, of just seeing it and, Take it for what it's worth, but I'm telling you, we've been down this road seven different times, and here's what you're going to need to do or be yeah. prepared for. I mean, it is it's um, it's kind of cool though. I enjoy a large part of that, you know, is being able to to help out because uh, at the end of the day, man, there's nothing better than seeing 
your clients actually being able to do the things that they never thought they would be. Yeah. Able to yeah. Do. And, or, you know, we've got this one client um, where they came to us very great. They're in home and gardening, right? I mean, they came to us and they had been trying for a year and a half to kind of kick off the online. They were in a lot of different big retailers online and doing mm-hmm. a lot of their e-commerce through them, but they wanted to bring it in-house. They want to bring all their traffic and control it and own their traffic to their own website. The largest month they'd had before we had taken over, I think was around 16, 17,000 bucks, yeah. $17,000 came to them, implemented everything within 30 to 45 days. We, the, or that first month, I even believe it was, we did 280,000. That's ridiculous. <laughs> and that, that trend continued like they're on track where they did, um, I think maybe a few hundred thousand the year previous. Um, and we've already there, they should surpass 1.1, 1.2 million by the time we do our first year. And then obviously continuing and what, what that has done, I'm not talking about from a results standpoint, why we love that part of it, but what they are talking about now doing with their business. And also the, the, what we're able to do from now a trusted advisor yeah. position and be able to give them feedback that they know is legit mm-hmm. and it is what they should be doing. Um, and they trust us in that, um, being able to, to see the excitement from their side, going into 2021, going into their next peak season, going into all that in the plans and what they're investing in, in all this stuff, like is stuff that, you know, the, the owner has said, I've been wanting to do this for 25 years since I started the business. Yeah. That's amazing. And so it's that type of stuff is real. And we have so many of those stories, a lot of a smaller scale than that to, you know, larger scales, but that's what, at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. You know what I mean? And, and being able to, to, to do that and provide that, um, you know, and I'm, I know that you guys are, are doing the same thing, but that's, that's really at the end of the day, what, what kind of gets us, keeps us going. That's what gets you out of bed in the morning. Exactly. That's, um, I mean, you just painted the, that picture way better than I can, but, <laughs> well you would you would have said the same thing yeah you know sure I mean? yeah, yeah. Let, let's let's believe that that's fine so but that <laughs> that's that's the beauty of kind of what we do is you can walk into a business see the opportunities give them a a pretty good guide on what you think is possible and then execute and and watch the transformation and there's very few businesses where that get to have that joy there's, there's not many businesses you can work in when you get to do that. 100%. I mean, and not, not in the way that we're able to, to do it and being able to utilize platforms, being, you know, really being able to, to take advantage of opportunities right now that sometimes do just seem unrealistic. Yeah. Like they do. And that, and I get that, like before I started doing this stuff on my own and I was like, I, I had to prove it to myself that all this stuff worked, that I'm going to be sitting here telling people what to do. And it was hard for me to kind of fathom until I started putting that work in. And I started just, you know, I'd never shot a video before mm-hmm. or picked up a camera and did that. And I just started first, videos that I was shooting were, you know, really, really crappy, like videos that were five minutes long and unpolished. And, uh, I probably did 50 takes and none of them were better than the other. I just yeah, felt yeah. like I was watching a monster, but being able to do that and then see it and show, like learn that process firsthand. And then obviously being able to see it work for others. Um, you know, it's, it, it can be frustrating sometimes because we know, like we, we understand, we get what's available. Yeah. We oh, know what's doable. Yeah. I, um, we started this podcast. So I used to record it on my phone with a little mic in the bottom of my phone. I had to be in the same room as the person I recorded it with. Now this is probably episode 110, 111. Um, that's awesome. Got a little podcast studio. I'm, I'm talking to a guy in America about his marketing business, you know, it's cool, man. But it's the same thing. It's the same thing. I used to shoot our videos. We used to shoot shoot those on our phone or at, on on the iMac, just pointing at us. Now we've got lights, we've got microphones, we've got cameras that I don't understand anymore because it's not my job to understand them anymore. Exactly. And, and 
that's kind of I want our clients to see that I want them to go on the same journey I want them to realize well, you can have all this stuff you can do it you can be putting out content of pretty decent quality and and then essentially we'll repurpose it and it'll be everywhere and you guys will go from being the quiet nice little business that you were to how the hell is this business doing this how are they everywhere and I, I get a kick out of that I, I love that I love that a, a Google display ad retargets me from one of our clients and I I can't get away from it's pretty, it yeah it's pretty it's pretty cool whenever you know you you see that happen and we we do some like um like done with you for for more beginner mm. e-commerce brands and all that it's pretty cool whenever you know you've got one they're working with one of the experts and um you know my wife works full-time in the business as well and is really a lot over the the brains behind everything the analytics or the the behind the scenes the stuff that i just my focus and my energy just does not go there. Like, yeah, you're you're it. you're busy building the business. <laughs> well, and too, man. I mean, the stuff that that it will take me a day to do takes her and her team five ten minutes. You know, yeah. they're, they're just in there popping it out, and I'm like wanting to put my head through the wall. But going back to people seeing that that journey along the way and understanding, like you're watching us, you're watching proof of what we're telling you to do and um it doesn't know and this is one thing that i do talk a lot and really hits home to kind of go back to your very like one of your first questions of this was how do you explain how do you get people that yeah. are out there cold calling and all that how do you get them to really understand and and one thing that that really i have found resonates with them um especially whenever it comes to video and the way that we set up our funnels and our strategies and all that and really try to be omnipresent yeah. everywhere and um what i tell them is how cool would it be if you were somebody were just to reach out to you schedule a time to speak with you on your calendar they said look i'm interested in what it is you have to offer i'd like to talk to you for 30 minutes then you get on the call and they already know who you are. They already know what you're about. They already know what to expect from what it is y'all are going to talk about. They already are bought in on Lynchpin Sales Interactive, or they're already bought in on your business. All they're doing is they're just wanting to talk to you to confirm what they think they know is real. And all you're doing is talking to them, answering some questions, and then they're like, all right, well, where do I sign up? How about that? Well, that's how we work now. Like that is what we're all about because we're putting that out there because of what we're able to do and how you're able to set that up. I get on calls and I'm still, it's still very humbling to me whenever I get on a call and somebody tells me about how many videos they watched of stuff that I had put out there or I have yeah. on YouTube or I have. And they're like, man, I took so many notes. This was so helpful. I'm already implementing what you talked about there. Now I want to talk about you guys taking over. Like, really, do you really have like one video that everybody brings up is a video of me in a golf cart? Um, uh, Cause we live in a community that has golf carts. Uh, and I was in a, I was just in a golf cart and I was providing them with just a tip that I thought about. And they, was that really you? You know, is that is that your golf? They're all enamored about this golf cart. Yeah. And that, it's weird, the stuff that people pick up on, but they're coming to me and they've already seen me. They already know how I talk. They already know what I'm going to say. They already believe that they feel good about the person that I am yeah. or the person that the team is. That All of that is getting done while you're still doing other stuff. You know what I mean? And yeah. you don't have to sit down and have a coffee with somebody anymore. Um and it really resonates and hits home whenever you're able to kind of explain it that way, because that's really at the end of the day, especially from a legion standpoint, um, is what makes the big difference is you're, I mean, you're continuing to, to repurpose, you're continuing to stay in front and you're doing it in a way that just already is building that trust, that authority, that credibility. Um, so that whenever you guys are talking, like all of that is done, the a lot of the rapport stuff, is done. I mean, you're still going to have to do some of it, but a lot of that's done. Um, so, you know, that's kind of the, the thought process behind it, but you're 100% right. Like being able to show them the proof in the pudding from just where we have gone doing yeah. this, I think is the strongest form 
of selling we can all do is just say, well, how do you know it works? Like, this is the best one. We run ads and all that. And I'm sorry, I'm going to shut up in a second, but we run ads and all that. And that's how we generate our inbound through Facebook and Instagram, Google, GDN, YouTube, all that, you name it. We're running ads across many different platforms. But um, at the, uh, you know, at the end of the day, people are, and I kind of got off track there for a second, but uh, which you'll find that I do a lot because my ADD is like stupid. But um, anyway, so at, I'm, at I'm going to let day, you keep going. This is awesome. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, we, oh yeah. So people, yeah. So um, obviously whenever we're running those ads and people will get on and they'll, we'll be going through the conversation, the, the, the um, qualification, all that uh, of that phone call. And one of the questions we still get a lot is like, do you, does this really work or does it work for B2B or what? And I just look at them usually through a zoom meeting or whatever it may be. And I'm like, well, how did we get on the phone today? And it's like, well, I saw one of your ads online and I scheduled a call. Okay. Um, so you're saying that we're talking about you wanting my services from an ad, which is what we're talking about doing for you. And you want to know if it works. Yeah. Seems like it's working pretty damn well right now. Like we're having this conversation. And so, you know, being able to, to um, really talk about that whole practice, what you preach peace is, is huge. I mean, yeah. there's nothing better to, to put out there. And I think if what we do, if how, what we say that we do, if it really works and this goes through everybody, you know, no matter what you're doing, like if you have something that works, especially from a marketing, advertising, sales standpoint, then shouldn't you be doing it yourself? It's kind of my thought process. Yeah. You know? Like, shouldn't you be using those same type things and being able to, to see success on your own a little bit? If not, I'm kind of, it kind of makes you wonder, like if you're a contractor and you want your kitchen remodeled, would you go out and hire another remodeling company to do that? Or would you do it yourself? Type yeah. thing. Um, now time obviously comes into play, but you know, obviously that's the biggest I think selling point selling tool that, that we can all use uh, yeah. for helping grow our business. And I like, I like with our business as well that people can ask me, okay, how have you done it and how much did it cost? And, yeah. I, and I'll say, and it gives them a real uh, reality check. They're like, okay. So how are you doing off that? Oh, well, we're doing quite well. Thank you. But there, there was a big time investment and there was a big financial investment to make it happen. That's the, that's the price of doing business. Yeah. But it's so worth it, isn't it? Mm. It's so worth it. I mean, it's, it's scary. I've I, and making those investments, especially early on. Um, and I'm able to sympathize because of that. Like I'm able to, to really get down with business owners who come and say, Hey, look, you know, my funds are tight or this that, and the other, this is a huge risk, blah, blah, blah. And you, we want to make sure it's the right fit and we're able to help them. But I'm able to realize and get down with them and say, Hey, look, you know, I invested a lot more than what I'm at. You know, what, what I think you need to invest. I invested tens of thousands of dollars over, you know, a lot longer period of time. And it is still, I'm still so ROI positive that it's insane, but yeah. I know it's scary. I get it. You know, mm -hmm. I, I understand it. I know where you're at. Um, but it's worth it. Especially kind I, of month one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. Exactly. And I mean, making sure, I think a lot of times people just want to, to know those expectations going in mm -hmm. so that they can properly prepare um, for what that's to come. It's whenever people are, um, you know, I was talking with somebody the other day and they had hired somebody they didn't have a good experience with them, which is, Unfortunately, a, a large percentage of our calls are coming from people that feel like they've been burned or didn't mm. have a good opportunity or, or um, experience before. But he was just saying how they were talking about, well, you know, for every dollar you invest, just imagine that becoming ten dollars. And I was just kind of like taken back and I, I don't sling mud. I just don't work that way. It's mm -hmm. all, you know, I always try to see the benefit in everybody and, and all that. Um, but, you know, and I told him, I'm like, look, I, I'm not going to tell you anything like that. Not because I want you to do business with me. I just, it's just not, not right. Like I can't tell you what it's going to be. I can tell you what we're going to shoot for and what we'll be happy with. 
and what we think. Yeah. But I, I'm not going to tell you that. And more than likely, it's going to take a 60, 90 days for us to really ramp up. Yeah. And uh, breaking even may be a win. We don't know. We'll see. But, um, you know, so there's still a lot of that out there. I think that makes it a little more difficult. But, um, you know, over time, I think that the companies that continue to get the results, they do it the right way. They build up those strong partnerships. I think they'll continue to to rise. Yeah. You know, and people start realizing that this game, this digital marketing game, this uh, Facebook ads or Instagram ads game is is not as easy as some want to make it out to be. Sure. It's not. There's a lot more going on behind the scenes than oh, we, so we call more. it an iceberg. So everybody can see the tip, but they have no idea what's going on under the water. And that's crazy. It, that for some, Sometimes that's a hard sell for us because we will, the client can't see what's going on under the water either. And so there's a lot of kind of reporting and, and catch ups that need to happen so that they can be kept up to speed on just how much you've done. Absolutely. And one, one thing that I've seen, and I don't know if you, you guys probably do this as well. I've seen focusing on over communicating early on helps a ton yeah. with clients, especially if they've never done it before. Um, and we really put an emphasis with the account management team and all that. Uh, look, I would rather you the first several weeks over communicating and just touching base. You don't have to really necessarily do a ton, just touch a base to let them know that we're watching because from their end, once we go live and you probably experienced this as well, it's not like all of a sudden you're seeing your ads plastered all over everything. And, and I think that's what people expect. Yeah. Like, Oh, I'm going to see, I'm going to see my ads and I'm going to get this and people it's just want to go out. It's like, it doesn't work that way. We need to reassure them that we're watching it and that they are top of mind and mm-hmm. that everything that's happening is completely normal. Don't worry about it. We got it. We'll let you know how things are progressing. And then once they start trusting that we just didn't shove them into a black hole, then they tend to start trusting it and trusting the process. Yeah. Yeah. When that they, eases up. When they see the trickle down. That's the, exactly. Yeah. As soon as they start to see it, they're like, oh, this really works. Because usually for us, it'll be they've had an inquiry and they can't tell where it's come from. So, so yes. we can tell. But they've never heard of this person or this company. Where did that come from? Or they get an inquiry from somewhere in a part of the country that they've never worked with before. And and then it's kind of, that's the I told you so moment. And everything kind of, from there on, they sort of big sigh of relief and they can see what's happening. For sure. Yeah, it makes a big difference whenever that happens. And, um, you know, whenever you can get to that point and it starts to free up opportunities at yeah. that point too. You know, once they start trusting, um, and I talk about it a lot, especially with new clients, is really we want to make sure early on that you trust the process. And if we can get you to where you're trusting the process and you're comfortable, um, that's going to allow you to feel more comfortable spending more and um, investing more. And then that's whenever we can really start having some fun. Yeah, yeah, exactly that. That's such a a good point that the day where they can see it all working and you can kind of, you know, the account manager or, you know, maybe even yourself or myself, you can call up the, the MD of that company and be like, so it's, you know, it's Black Friday soon or it's, it's Christmas soon or it's Easter soon. We think you should do this and it's going to cost you this. And they're like, yeah, do it. And 100, yeah. yeah, that's, yeah, that's exactly like, and you see that a lot. The more people work with you, the more they trust you. And once you show them results, they're going to be, you know, obviously a lot more open. And then you start seeing that uh, it kind of flips where now, whether it's an MD, business owner, whatever it may be, they start really relying on, on us yeah. to come to them and say, look, this is what we're saying. Like, this is what we need to be doing. And, um, you know, our job at the end of the day is just to make you look good. Yeah. And, uh, and here's ideas. And we, we've been able, and that's one of the beautiful things of working across platforms and markets and, and industries and all that is like, we're able to see a lot of data um, and trends and what's working and, and what we think is going to be the best for you. We just need you to go do it. Like, and, and approve it and yeah. now let us be on our way 
and we're, we're going to take it and run with it. And um, that's whenever stuff like you, like you probably know, I mean, that's whenever stuff really gets fun uh, for everybody. Um, and so we, that's kind of where we, we aim to be yeah. uh, with every one of our clients for sure. Brandon, you've been so generous with your time and your expertise. Uh, one My last pleasure, question. Man. If somebody wants to get in touch with you, what's the best way? How do they get in your funnel? <laughs> yeah, well, so, uh, yeah, good question. Um, so you can go to our website, obviously, lynchpinsales.com. You, you'll be able to see uh, some good downloads there, some good uh, information, case studies, value uh, information. If you're looking for specific for e-commerce, you can go to growmystorenow.com. There's a lot of stuff around our e-commerce um, solutions, but a lot of great value add videos um, in that that you can go that are completely free, just trying to provide value uh, for anybody who visits. And then obviously you can go follow us on Facebook or connect with me on LinkedIn. Like I uh, would love to connect with you and stay in touch uh, with anybody if there's anything we can do to help out or, you know, we're all about providing as much value as we can and helping people um, if we can regardless if that's free or it becomes a partnership. Like we just want people to see success. Worst case scenario is hopefully we gained a raving fan, you know? Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much for coming on the Stay Hungry podcast. Absolutely. Thanks for having me.